Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I know hits close to home. And that's why you think your animations suck. But first, your animations probably don't suck as much as you think they do. The thing is, we're often our own worst critic. Your judgment may be better than your skill level, which means all you can see are your flaws. But here's a little trick. Go back to your previous work from last year or last month and critique your work again. I think you'll see even more flaws in that piece of work. But that just proves you're a better animator. To be honest, the best animators I know, they hate all their work. This is because there's such high standards for what they deem good. So if you feel like your work isn't quite good enough, don't worry, you're in good company. Use that feeling for motivation, growth and learning. But if you feel like your work could improve or that your animations need some more love, stick around because I've got some tips to help you out. Now this advice is for all animators, not just Maya users. So Blender, Maya or even 2D artists, hopefully this will be useful for you too. For those of you who are new here, my name's Fergus. I am a professional animator currently working in television. I'm also doing my first feature film. On this channel, I document my growth as an animator. I have tutorials, workflows, animation. So if that seems like something you're into, hit that subscribe button and follow me on my journey. Let's talk about why you think animations might suck. So this video isn't gonna go through all the principles of animation. If I had to choose three to really focus on and try to master, there'll be timing and spacing, anticipations, squats and stretch. Once you have a solid understanding of these three, you can really use these two together and make really, really good animation. This book is about the animation principles, all 12 of them. This book is more technical. It has all the knowledge you need for timing and spacing, lip sync, how to do walk cycles. And between these two books, I would choose this one first. So I say master the basics, but what does that really mean? Because you can say timing and spacing all you want, but how can I apply that to my shots? And how can I apply that to my skill level? For absolute beginners, I think that means doing the bouncing ball Again, I'm sure everyone watching this video has done that at least once, but trust me when I say you probably haven't mastered it properly. The first time you do a bouncing ball, you're learning Maya, you're learning Blender, you're learning all about these new animation principles. You get a pretty decent bouncing ball, maybe to your eye it's perfect, and then you move on to the pendulum or maybe a walk cycle, and then you haven't really mastered the bouncing ball. So go back, look at your first bouncing ball, look for the flaws, I'm sure there'll be some, and then do the bouncing ball. Again, it might sound tedious, but trust me, it's really, really important. The reason I say this is because every single animation is just a bouncing ball. For example, look at this animation I made yesterday. All these curves are just bouncing balls. There's an up pose, there's a down pose. Extremes are really what we're focusing on. And the tangents in and out, they can affect the timing and the spacing. And that shows the weight, the power and the speed of your animation. This also applies to lip sync, dialogue shots. All the basic principles apply and understanding the bouncing ball and the curves is essential to understanding timing and spacing. But it's not just the bouncing ball. Go back and do the pendulum, do another walk cycle. Just go back to your beginner exercises, spend a day, redo them. I can guarantee you, it will improve your other animation shots and make you a better animator. So for advanced animators, once you've mastered these basics, really think about the weight of your shot. One of the best animators of all time, Mick Carl, he did Mickey Mouse and the Jungle Book. He once said, always understand where the weight is coming from. What that means is if you're doing a walk cycle, for example, know which hip is holding the weight, which hip is going to take the weight, understanding how the weight's going to transfer between A and B poses. And once you get these sort of basic principles down and understand really weight, inertia, and other forces are affecting your character, you can really just take your animation to another level. The most common force, of course, is gravity, which is a given. But think of all the other forces that can affect your character. So wind is one example, or maybe a character pushing. If you're being pushed, where are you being pushed from? Where's the force coming from? Or if you're the one doing the pushing, of course, your hips are gonna drive the action, your feet are gonna be planted. But thinking about all these things really can make your animations feel believable and more alive. Point three is learn to e-critique, or just critique in general. When I'm at work, or on the train, I'm a bit bored. I go to YouTube, Instagram, and I just go through animations and I critique them even in my head. I'm looking at timing and spacing, I'm looking at just general acting choices and things that I think I could do better or maybe there's things that I would change. And I'm not being egotistical to say I can do better. I'm just saying that it's good to really work out what's going on in the shot, what's working well and what's not working. I can guarantee you most good animators or most good artists, they want feedback. Don't be afraid to even leave comments on people's work saying, hey, this looks great. Actually, maybe change this foot or maybe make it feel heavier or lighter. This dinosaur behind me, Go to that video, look at it. If you think it's got problems, tell me. I want to know. I want to learn and I want to improve and that requires all your help. So do please subscribe to the channel 
like my videos and give me feedback. But this also helps you as an artist too. If you're understanding how things work for other people's shots, you can apply that to your own shots as well. I still do tutor sessions at Animation Mental and I give them feedback. And I feel like it helps me more than it helps them sometimes. I'm always learning how to articulate my concerns or my sort of problem areas. And then by doing so, I have to train my brain and my eye to actually understand what's going wrong with the shot. I can take that knowledge and, and apply it to all my shots. And I think one of the biggest things that has improved my animation has been doing these tutor sessions, even though I'm the teacher. Also, like I said, go back to your old work, take another look, see what went wrong then. I see my student work now and I, I just, I hate it. The next tip is mastering your tool. So I use Maya, like I said. For the first year of learning animation, I spent most of it learning Maya, at least from the animation side of things. And up until basically I graduated from Animation Mentor, I was still struggling with constraints. I was learning how to use animation layers and all these things. If I knew them from my previous shots, I could have made them so much faster, probably better. But these aren't animation principles. These are just general technical tips for Maya. So really understand and learn your tool. Go to the documentation for the Autodesk uh, website. Or if you're a Blender, go to the Blender Foundation homepage. If you're a 2D artist, buy a better pencil. But learn your tool because it really helps you. And if you can learn how to do things without thinking about it, you can then just focus on the creative stuff and the basics of animation and the principles of animation. And that's what will make your animations better. Just forget all the technical stuff, just learn it, make it second nature, and then you can make animations. So if you are struggling with Maya, Spend a few weeks, actually learn Maya, learn constraints, learn about animation layers, learn all the things in the outline that you can do, all the tricks, all the hotkeys, everything you can do. Like I said, this YouTube channel is about growth, about learning. I've just opened up a Discord where I can share people's animations. So do send me your stuff. I want to see what you're working on, especially if you follow one of my tutorials, please upload the result and I will give you some feedback. All free of charge, of course. The only caveat is that I would like to maybe take some of these critiques and I'll upload them to YouTube for everyone to see. Um, if you're okay with that, just send me the link in the Discord chat and I will happily give you a review. Please like this video, subscribe. Thank you for joining me on my animation journey. Cheers and happy animating. Bye-bye.